Please like and leave a heart. Please. There we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Vidor Locksmith Show. I'm your host, David Gibson, where we are unlocking the secrets to success in the oil and gas industry. One interview, one technical presentation, and one technical screw-up at a time. So happy to have you guys here with us on this Friday. Uh, taking a couple of weeks off, just haven't been able to get some, some scheduled, but also did a little racing. Uh, don't know if you guys saw the video on that I posted online. Uh, but it was a very momentous race weekend. We did the 24 Hours of Lemons, which is a race where, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a race where you have to race for, uh, it's not full 24 hours, seven hours Sunday, seven hours Saturday, uh, with a car that you purchased for less than $500. Uh, we did great uh, the first half of the first day, then we started to have some, some engine problems, uh, and then ended up rebuilding the top side of the motor. Uh, from Sunday, Saturday night into Sunday, got back on the track Sunday. Uh, teammates, uh, you know, full teammates, Rick Allen, Ryan Brogley, uh, Pete Stetson finally got in the car on Sunday, got to put down some great lap times. Then Kay Jackson came out there and put down the fastest lap time of the weekend. And then I got in the car and wanted to beat one of those, at least one, be able to beat one of those laps. So here's a quick little clip of what happened uh, on that race weekend. So I won't make you guys watch the rest of it, but I did get out of the car. But that was just a fun little clip that we had. Uh, just wanted to be able to share it. So yeah, guys, let me know where you guys are watching from. Love to be able to give everybody a shout out here on the show. Uh, we have an absolutely amazing show uh, planned for today. Uh, I cannot tell you guys enough how much this, this show means to me. This is something that um, uh, is a highlight of my career, um, as well as I think it's something that a lot of people really don't know about. So be sure to stay tuned. All right, uh, going to be able to give some highlights out here. So Christian, as he says, jujitsu. Uh, yeah, both the guys on the show today are uh, definitely jujitsu guys. Uh, there we go. Richard Zamora says, "Good morning, guys." Richard, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see your name on that race car here pretty soon. Uh, Le Mans style racing. That's awesome. So it's not Le Mans; it's Lemons. So, but yeah, similar stuff. Endurance racing, and then LinkedIn user says, "Good morning from Houston." All right. Well, not as many comments as normal this morning, but uh, maybe those will start to come in. All right, guys. Uh, so today, definitely going to be giving away some stuff. Big shout out and thanks to our sponsor, hashtag AI Driller. So let me, there it is. AI Driller is sponsoring today's show. So if you want to be able to win one of these 3D printed drill bits from Gibson Reports, Put in hashtag AI Driller into the comment section now, and we'll be sure to get one of these sent over to you immediately. Uh, as well as, I don't know, we'll probably throw a hat. Uh, we'll get some more AI Driller swag. Haven't I don't know what it is just yet, but I do know that some is on the way, so we'll be able to get you some AI Driller swag and get that sent over to you. So here's a quick clip from our amazing sponsor, AI Driller. Check it out. Girl, I want to hear you whisper. Girl, I There we go. Yeah. So put in hashtag AI driller throughout the show and we will be sure to. Oh, I forgot to do something. Wait. I forgot to put the little thing on there to make sure that that. Oh, see, this is what happens when I haven't done the show in a while. Give away. I didn't put the little capture comments thing on there. So y'all going to have to do all that again. All right. So for anybody that already put it in, you're going to have to do it a second time. All right. Technical screw up of the day. All right. Um, nobody's perfect. Right. There we go. Maybe we'll 
we'll remind you guys as we're going throughout the episode. Maybe, uh, Tracy, if you'll put it into the comment section every once in a while. All right. So apologies there. So AI driller, AI driller, you guys are going to have to do it all again. Uh, a quick little clip of clip of the car on fire. Yes. Quick little clip of the car on fire. Yes, that is correct. We, uh, we did have the car on fire. So once again, put it hashtag AI driller to get your chance to win a drill bit. Sorry, messed up on my part there. All right. So without further ado, I'm really excited to be able to introduce uh, someone who I consider a, a friend in the industry. Got to sit alongside him uh, at the most recent SVE ATCE event and help. Um, we were co-moderators, uh, chairs for one of the technical discussions at this year's, uh, like I said, SVE ATCE. Absolutely phenomenal person, has done tons in the industry. Super intelligent, as well as an MMA fighter and a jiu -jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, my friend Judici. Judici, thank you for being here, sir. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? All right. Well, I know you've got a presentation for us, so I'll go oh, ahead and okay. put it up on the screen and I'll let you take it away. Oh, all right. Educate all of us on some amazing stuff that happens down hole. Okay. All right. So uh, thank you very much, uh, David, first of all, to give me this opportunity uh, to present, you know, uh, my presentation today. And also, I appreciate uh, Sambian Technologies and the Tabo Drill Industries for allowing, allowing me to spend some time on this. And a special thanks uh, goes to AI Reader for supporting this show. So my name is uh, Jun Sugiura, uh, Vice President of Sambian Technologies. And the co-author uh, co is uh, Steve Jones. He's a CEO and the president of Sambian Technologies. So my presentation is about uh, mud motor backdrive dynamics. The presentation was originally given in 2021 uh, during the pandemic at the SPE IADC drilling conference. So the presentation time was uh, very limited, limited to uh, 15 to 20 minutes. And we uh, were able to present only like two cases out of five cases, uh, you know, due to the time limit. So today, uh, I can present the full version covering all the topics uh, written in the paper. So all five examples, and plus, you know, some updates. So basically, this uh, is this this paper is SPE two zero four, sorry two four zero. Uh, 204032 ms manuscript uh, actually this was later converted to published as a, one of the SPE peer review papers as a SPE 20403a uh, 3 uh, sorry 204032pa uh, meaning that the peer review article so uh, uh, the paper itself is very long and we gather the data actually a lot of data between 2017 and to, uh, 2020 to, to write this paper. So let's let's go to uh, next slide. So this is a quick uh, speaker bio. Uh, the same information can be found at the website sambiantech.com. Uh, Sambian so I'm, the, um, I'm a chartered engineer, chartered petroleum engineer, chartered energy, energy engineer, Fellow of the Institution of Engineering Technology and also Fellow of the Energy Institute. So, as uh, David mentioned, you know, I have involved SBATCE and the drilling conferences for many years as a volunteer. And this year, uh, David and I, along with uh, Deep Joshi, uh, co chair the AI and the ML in drilling session. So, this is uh, just last month, you know, in San Antonio. And this is where we started uh, our conversation um, on uh, video locksmith. And later, you know, David uh, just messaged me inquiring the SPE uh, paper number, uh, describing this uh, motor backdrive dynamics topic. So I thought this is uh, probably, you know, a uh, good time to present it and, uh, and refresh our, uh, our knowledge. And some of them you know, already uh, very familiar with the uh, phenomena. And some others uh, never heard of this, so this is probably a good time. So let's go to the next slide. So the agenda, 
Um, so I, I quickly want to introduce, you know, what the mud motor backdrive dyna dynamics is and the downhole sensors, you know, we used to gather the data. And again, you know, original paper was very long, um, five examples in the paper, but this time um, I, I can present, you know, all five examples instead of just uh, two examples we uh, presented at the conference. And, and then finally, you know, I will go over uh, some mitigation measures and summarize my presentation. So the introduction, uh, there are some, uh, okay, uh, uh, spoilers, you know, in the ha second half of the paragraph. So I'm gonna just uh, skip it. But uh, basically motor backdrive dynamics is a special case of uh, torsional dynamics where a bit could come to a complete stop and the motor could drive the drill string backward. And this presentation, and uh, sorry, uh, also the typically a uh, non-stored motor is involved. And also you can observe negative rotation of the motor top sub and a drill string. All right, so uh, after, without going uh, reading this uh, sentence, I will skip to this slide. So this slide shows uh, what the compact drilling dynamics recorders look like. So one form of a drain dynamics recorder is, is called a hockey pack shaped uh, sensor and thread it into the uh, uh, RSS bit box, motor bit box, or bit chunk of the drill bit. So uh, this, this sensor itself uh, records the mainly, you know, low, uh, three axis acceler accelerations and a bit drill string uh, rotation speed in a continuous recording mode. And there's another form of a uh, sensor. Uh, this is the uh, cigar shaped. And this one uh, with in, enclosed in uh, uh, 15,000 PSI pressure housing. And some cases, you know, uh, two, two hockey pack shaped sensors are installed to allow more than 250 hours of continuous recording of the three axis acceler accelerations at the sampling frequency of 1600. 1600 hertz and in this case you know you can have uh this cigar type of sensor in the center line of the uh, uh, drill bit so also this one can go to loader catch and the loader of the mud motor and so uh, uh lately we have uh some upgrades um or well, we had some upgrades uh, uh, for a while uh and in terms of a uh, rotation speed measurement. So these can measure up to one th plus minus 1000 RPM. And we have also a, a pack shaped uh, sensor uh, that, that can go up to 175 degrees C or 347 F. These can be used in uh, hot holes in Heinzville and some other place and also geothermal applications. As you can see, this is the uh, U.S. Uh, quarter coin. So uh, uh, there's a lot of things, you know, uh, stuffed into this uh, hockey pack. Okay, and uh, yeah, so originally, you know, we started our company. Uh, company itself uh, has been co-founded uh, co by Steve Jones in uh, 2015. So since then, we got some sensors. The reason being, you know, we are we develop, you know, uh, downhole drilling tools. Uh, for example, rotary stable systems. Uh, this is a, one of one of our tools. And in order to understand how the uh, drilling tool works or doesn't work, we need to have a sensors. You know, this is going to be. Uh, uh, this becomes uh, ears and eyes uh, for the downhole tools while drilling. So this was a motivation to develop some sensors. Uh, compact sensors and embedded sensors. And we deploy these sensors in the point of interest. In this case, you know, uh, in a, inside a drill bit or a bit box, or could be a uh, top sub of the motor or somewhere in a drill string. Oops, sorry. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. Uh, no worries. All right. This, you said uh, one screw up at the time. So <laughs> I guess. While well, everybody's waiting, don't forget. Okay. 
Today is brought uh, to you by AI Driller. So if you can put it in hashtag <laughs> AI Driller to the comment section now. Okay. Just, can, can, can you see my screen? Uh, no, you got to hit the present here, down at the bottom. Here, okay. All right. Uh, I think somehow, you know, I, I hit the wrong button and disappeared. So uh, my, my apologies. I've got, I've got one of our good friends texting me right now during the show. That's uh, uh, She's going to hassle us as we go through this. Okay, there we go. And I'm going right, to keep hassling sorry. her until yeah. she comes on the show. Ooh, I'm, I'm sweating a lot. But uh, here, oh, I'm sorry. Just, uh, you know, um, my apologies for the video quality. Um, so I'm, I'm based in the UK. And right now, um, it's about 4.15. Uh, but this is uh, unexpected, you know, it's already pretty dark outside and I usually rely on the natural light, uh, but it doesn't work, you know, this time. So uh, my apologies. And then let's go to the next slide. Oop, this is a uh, danger. Okay. All right. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Can you see the screen, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Very good. All right. So now, yeah. So the field example one, uh, this is a non-limit cycle case. And I'm showing an instrumented motor. Um, so this is the uh, conventional stable motor BHA with a six and three quarter inch drill bit and running in West Texas, a drilling lateral section and an embedded drilling dynamics decoders were run with a five and seven, uh, three quarter inch, uh, six, seven, eight, eight point eight stage motor. So this is about 0.68 uh, revs per gallon or RPG. And you can see uh, uh, on this slide, the continuous sampling and recording frequencies of uh, those sensors. So uh, we have, okay, at the bit box, 800 Hertz acceleration, uh, 100 Hertz solid state gyro continuously decoding and exact identical sensor uh, on the top sub of the motor. Basically this uh, records the uh, drill string uh, dynamics. And in this particular uh, BHA, we also had the pressure uh, sensor in a cigar shape. So this is a 200 uh, hertz continuously decoding of pressure. Um, and then this was very important to confirm what's, what is going on with this motor. So let's take a look at the next slide. Okay. So, uh, um, so this is the uh, overview of uh, of the data, uh, just the one uh, slide contains a lot of information. This is approximately four days of uh, recording and the downhole sensor data uh, is really combined with uh, EDR, um, e electronics uh, drilling uh, data, deco uh, data decoding data. Uh, so uh, on this, uh, on the left side, let's see, uh, on the second uh, track, we see a top sub RPM. Uh, it, it shows the minimum, maximum, and the median uh, rotation speed. And the third one is the drill bit, bit box RPM. And this one again, minimum, maximum, and medium uh, values. And again, you know, as, as I say, uh, this uh, is combined with uh, some surface uh, parameters. So you can see uh, surface RPM on orange, fourth track. Weight on bed, uh, torque, and the next one is the surface pressure, differential pressure, and uh, 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 standpipe pressure in green as well. And then we have downhole sensor data, pressure data. Uh, this is a sample at 20, uh, 200 hertz over here. And we have some uh, temperatures and also uh, uh, shock data. So in terms of uh, drilling dynamics, uh, shock itself is uh, like moderate and then low, low shocks. It's, it, it wasn't a problem. But if you look at the drill bit, uh, bit box RPM and the tops of RPM, as you notice this inside, you know, uh, rec red rectangle, uh, bit often goes to zero and actually you can see it stops, you know, at the zero RPM. And uh, you, if, you, if you look at the top sub RPM in the corresponding RPM, minimum RPM goes to negative because here, right here is a zero RPM uh, level and it goes, this blue goes to negative RPM. So this happens, you know, almost for the entire run on and off, but uh, for, the, for the entire run. 
So here we uh, just wanted to zoom in and confirm what's what's going on. So the last eight hours would be uh, uh, zoomed in in the next slide. So this is about approximately 20,000 uh, feet MD. So it's really uh, uh, deep. And the first track from the top shows the uh, Bitbox RPM in orange. The second uh, track shows the top sub RPM. So meaning that this is the drill string RPM uh, in red. And the blue one is a surface RPM. So uh, yeah, so there, there is some red around the blue uh, because uh, uh, high frequency data uh, just shows the uh, uh, stick slip traits. And then a uh, third one from the top is a motor pressure uh, in brown. Uh, so this is the uh, pressure sensor installed in uh, loader catch. And uh, as you can see, there are seven rotate uh, drilling sections, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then some slide sections here, slide drilling. And in he uh, here, you know, already uh, we, we noticed that, uh, okay, uh, bit goes to zero, zero RPM, and uh, top sub RPM, or drill, drill swing RPM goes to negative. So what, what we try to do now is just to, you know, zoom in uh, in this blue uh, rectangle area in the next slide. So this is how it looks like. Uh, again, this is a, a only 90 second interval. But you know, oh, if, if we zoom in too much, it's kind of difficult to see. But here, uh, there seems to be in a bit box, okay, uh, occasionally goes down to zero RPM. This is the zero RPM level in blue line. And in a systematic manner, it's, it's kind of difficult to recognize from here because this is a, a rotate drilling period and there are a lot of uh, uh, noise, you know, drilling noise. And a drill string RPM, so here, Okay, again, corresponding uh, zero RPM at the bit, we see negative RPMs. You can see in the, those uh, orange circled areas, oval areas. And uh, we also you know, can notice that the motor pressure is, is going down as well around the same time. Okay, so the question is why the drill bit sticks every three to five seconds? Is this like a systematic or just uh, by chance? And the answer is, you know, next slide. So previous slide, uh, you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't very clear because there are a lot of uh, drilling noise. So this on this slide, we are zooming in for the uh, uh, slide drilling period. Uh, less noise, less vibrations. So again, uh, similar to the previous slide, uh, top one, the top curve in orange, is the bit box RPM. And the uh, uh, surface RPM, drill string RPM is here, uh, close to zero. Yeah, because this is sliding. And also motor uh, pressure uh, looks like, you know, uh, highly correlated with a bit box RPM. So, and then uh, if you look at the waveform, uh, this looks uh, pretty familiar to the MWD engineers and you know, a lot of people in the drilling industry because on the surface, uh, we are also looking at the, this kind of a display showing the mud pulse telemetry. And there are there will be a lot of uh, uh, you know, spikes uh, coming from a, a mud, mud pulser. And we, uh, we see those positive uh, mud pulses at the surface in order to decode this. So uh, what happens is, you know, when the mud pulse uh, telemetry, mud, mud pulser activates this puppet valve, or, or you know, uh, activate it and uh, reduces the flow rate. So uh, that means, you know, increases the uh, uh, pressure above the mud pulser, so we can detect uh, signals on the surface. But what happens to below the motor? Below the motor uh, is actually opposite we are uh, getting uh, you know, uh, negative pressure or less pressure. And uh, this is the uh, zoom in part of the uh, pressure data. So you can see in this uh, red rectangle. 
So the pressure is decreased by 250 psi. And uh, uh, if you look at you know, uh, duration of uh, this decrease in uh, pressure is 0.8 seconds. This is actually exactly the same as the, what we set up for uh, mud pulser uh, pulse width, which was uh, 0.8 second. So uh, there's a high correlation between uh, uh, pressure fluctuation inside the motor uh, uh, to, the, to the drill bit, uh, as well as uh, to the also uh, uh, beatbox rotation speed. So uh, this one, uh, we have uh, two different sensors. Uh, Measuring the same thing, you know, same uh, uh, telling the same story. So basically, uh, when uh, mud pulsar activates, the flow is restricted. Because of this, uh, motor output rotation speed is reduced. And the, and also there are some high frequency uh, oscillations riding on uh, pressure data and the beatbox data. So what we did was uh, here. Uh, this is a 200 hertz uh, pressure data. So we uh, applied a Fourier transform and showing a spectrogram. So we, we got the uh, uh, frequency range between zero and 100 hertz uh, frequency data. And we confirmed that uh, this oscillation frequency is uh, 7.5 hertz. Uh, and this is writing on both uh, bit, you know, uh, bit rotation speed and uh, drill bit. Uh, pressure, motor pressure. So we, uh, in the paper, we did, really did, didn't dig into uh, uh, root cause of this uh, pressure oscillation, but I, I can assume this is uh, coming from uh, uh, commutation of the rotor or some kind of axial vibration uh, coupling to uh, rotation speed and also uh, the motor pressure. So this is about what we are observing. Let's go to the next one. So here, you know, we try to go back and, and then uh, rationalize, you know, what is the sequence of events? And here we listed, you know, first of all, the mud, pulse, uh, mud pulsar is activated. So here uh, on the right side, and a puppet activates and uh, this restricts the flow. So mud pulsar generates a positive pressure pulse above the MWD and the negative pressure pulses below the MWD. So negative pressure meaning in this case is just the reduction in the pressure. And the, press, uh, the pressure and the flow rate reduction lowers the bit rotation speed. So in this case, you know, we noticed that the 250 PSI reduction in, uh, uh, in the pressure inside the motor. And the bit rotation, uh, ro torsional oscillation, uh, such as 7.5 hertz oscillation, further reduces the bit bit's instantaneous rotation speed. So uh, surprisingly, you know, motor, uh, motor rotor and the drill bit oscillates this kind of a high, higher frequency. Uh, so that also causes the another sticking uh, to the uh, drill bit. So the bit reduces uh, rotation speed, increases the bit torque, which further reduces the bit speed. So this phenomena was uh, proposed by uh, uh, Brett, uh, uh, 1992, SPE paper, 21943PA. So uh, this is uh, also a very well-known phenomena, but uh, um, I'm gonna just skip this and then go to uh, uh, item six. So the, when the bit stops, stops rotating, bit is in a stack phase or zero RPM. This is exactly what we saw. Um, you know, bit sticks and uh, uh, rotation speed goes to zero, but motor never stalled and keep rotating. So that means, you know, um, driving the uh, top sub and the drill string backward. That's why we are seeing, you know, minus 40 and a minus 50 RPM at the top sub. So let's go to the next slide. So this is a, a little bit more explanation on uh, the previous slide, then Brett, it, uh, 1992. Nope. So there's, oh, okay. Uh, did I lose? No, 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 keep going. Sorry, I just okay. clicked the wrong, the wrong button. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, all right. So, uh, okay, uh, there's an argument, you know, uh, discussion as well in the industry. 
you know, existence of uh, RPM dependent torque. But uh, this is just one theory, you know. So that there's a theory about angular velocity dependent torque. So this plot is coming from uh, Hall et al. 2015, just modified for, for this paper. Uh, but uh, uh, so there's a theory that uh, uh, bit torque over here, uh, vertical axis, is a function of uh, 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 rotation speed. So there's angular velocity. So lower the angular velocity, bit rotation speed, uh, torque goes up. So this one uh, becomes like a, a triggering uh, mechanism to slow down and the torque increases, slow down, and finally bit goes to the uh, stop. So there are also other explanations, you know. Uh, so the pox possible explanation without using the this theory is uh, because, you know, bit torque increases due to increase the penetration per evolution or uh, depth of cut. So uh, some of them can be explained with the uh, pointing effect. I got some uh, 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 pictures from uh, 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 this website. And also another, there's a, also yet another explanation, which is the uh, drill string length increase uh, based on uh, differential pressure uh, increase, you know, due to the map pulsar. So this one was already uh, um, talked about a long time ago, 1962, and commonly referred to as uh, BHA ballooning. So basically, you know, when uh, pressure increases above the motor, so we are drilling a 10,000, 20,000 uh, foot lateral or uh, the long wells. And that increase in pressure uh, actually stretches the uh, drill string. So that means, you know, bit would be thrusted to the formation. So the, this mechanism can temporarily increase the penetration per evolution, thus elevate the bit torque required. So this was uh, at this point when I wrote a paper, uh, 2020, um, this was, the, you know, my uh, hypothesis and uh, just the assumption. And uh, I, I was imagining a possible weight on bit and torque, a bit, torque on bit increase. So, uh, um, the next year, uh, so I, I presented my paper in 2021, and next year, right away, 2022, there's a paper, SPE 208710MS. Uh, so this is written by uh, Matt Isbell et al. And uh, he, he showed, uh, I mean, his team, uh, team of co-authors showed us, okay, image from the left. This plot also shows, all right, uh, gyro speed at the bit. Nominal speed is 200 RPM, and the uh, bit sticks uh, occasionally based on uh, map pulsing. So this is uh, exactly the same uh, what I, as uh, what I observed like one year prior to this paper. And they actually went further and look, looking at the drilling mechanics data. So, uh, and this drilling mechanics data, this is really a very uh, uh, valuable data. So on the right side is the pressure. So uh, above the motor, it would be a positive pressure. Uh, and then below the motor, it would be a negative pressure. So this shows the negative uh, or reduction in the pressure, uh, differential pressure. And as the uh, pressure decreases, weight on bit increases. So of course, weight on bit increases, it will, I mean, drill bit and the bit cutters bite into the formation. Therefore, uh, torque on bit at the bit increases. So uh, uh, this is really uh, uh, good information to confirm our hypothesis. And uh, yeah, last, uh, last month uh, at the SPATCE, I talked to Matt Isbell and we had uh, lunch for uh, drilling dynamics and, uh, and the mechanics enthusiast. And he was uh, sitting right next to me and I said, uh, yeah, you know, this person, this and this, you know, find uh, this and this phenomena and uh, he researched this and he goes, yeah, uh, but, you know, this is all a uh, community effort. And uh, this is correct. You know, what he said is, you know, we as a community, um, somebody finds something uh, next year or next, next time, you know, we uh, find some other stuff and then actually knowledge expands and help the drilling industry. So uh, not just the one person, but uh, as a community effort, we are 
uh, expanding our knowledge in uh, drilling dynamics. So uh, this was a good, really good data. And uh, okay, so we are very, getting very close to the uh, 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 end of uh, uh, example one. So uh, please stay tuned. <laughs> okay, be patient. So uh, two possible consequences, you know, uh, that we can imagine. So uh, the first consequence is mud, mud motor back, back drive. And the other consequence is more, uh, motor micro stall events. So this is when bit sticks and, and sticks and completely stops. But, uh, you know, uh, depending on the motor reaction. So the first case is uh, the motor back drive events occur when the bit gets stuck and the motor power section is powerful enough to drive the drill string backward. So this is uh, mostly the case, you know, and they, 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 lately, and we have seen so many data uh, with the uh, back drive because uh, mud motor is very powerful. And the second one, uh, the motor is not powerful enough. And what happens is the motor micro stall may be the consequences. So basically motor cannot, uh, there's a flow uh, constantly going through the mud motor but the mud motor doesn't provide enough uh, torque to uh, back drive, and this is the micro stalls. So I, I'm not going to cover too much details on the micro stalls, but you can find some uh, SP papers, and also there's a thesis uh, in a public place. You can uh, read a paper. All right, so uh, finally, the summary. All right. Okay, so uh, summary from the field test one. So we just, uh, you know, uh, explain the non-limit cycle cases. Non-limit cycle meaning a series of uh, one-off events. And uh, this is caused by uh, mud pulse tele uh, telemetry, mud pulses. And the mud pulses uh, slows down the rotation speed at the bit. And, and then, you know, once, you know, uh, there's a complete stop of a drill bit, that may cause the motor to rotate the drill thing backward. So this was confirmed with a pressure sensor. I think this is the uh, newer aspect of, uh, of the paper uh, confirmed with a pressure sensor. And also motor back drive dynamics were observed both rotate and slide drilling, uh, drilling of a conventional steerable assemblies. And I, I will cover more examples later. And the bit st sticking mechanism can end up in uh, two situations. One is motor back drive events and the micro stall events. And then maybe, you know, there's a transitional uh, state where you know both of them coexist or one after another right after another combination of both so uh, uh, the other thing is mwd mud pulse activation can cause the uh, bit sticking and the motor back dynamics a weight on bit and torque on bit increase during the mud pulser activation was observed and, con and confirmed in uh, sp paper this is by uh, uh, Matt Isabel Etoile. So, uh, are there any questions, uh, David? Yeah, so we've mm. gotten, uh, well, I'll skip that one for right now. Uh, mm. this one's from Robert. It says, if the drill string gets longer with positive pulse LW or with positive pulse MWD, sorry, Lubinsky, does it shorten or pull? pull bits off bottom during momentary negative pulse MWD. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, again, yeah, this is, a, yeah, th it, there are different theories and there's also a theory about uh, BHA ballooning. So uh, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have any uh, evidence uh, right now, you know, to show uh, which one is true. So uh, this one, uh, for example, uh, okay, coming back. Okay, so again, this is a like assumption, like a theories, and uh, the, all these are theories. And you know, uh, just like you know, uh, as I uh, described in the paper. Okay, so we may be able to see this with a uh, weight on bit and torque on bit. And once you know, uh, sensor is sensor data is available, we can confirm that. And the stretching and uh, contracting, uh, again, this is a BHA ballooning or either pointing effect. Uh, right now, we don't have a sensor data, so we cannot really confirm. But, you know, I, I think, you know, uh, as a community, you know, drilling community, 
uh, we spend more time on this effect, we, we should be able to confirm what, what is really causing uh, uh, bit sticking. But from the data, uh, looks like, you know, uh, definitely uh, uh, bit is thrusted to the formation. Therefore, uh, cutters bite into the formation and that in increases the weight on bit and the torque on bit. Right? Uh, do we had a comment here. Uh, higher torque will also cause the string to twist and shorten the drill string length, which would reduce the weight on bit and depth of cut. Right, 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 right. Okay, so this is, uh, this is again, <laughs> yeah, both of them are pretty similar. One mechanism uh, thrusts the PDC cutters into the formation and the sticks. And uh, this is really excellent, you know. And then uh, when, uh, okay, drill string uh, uh, stores a torsional energy, that's when uh, maybe, you know, or, uh, shorten the BHA length and then release. So there, there should be a feedback mechanism, right? So one thrusting mechanism and the other uh, is like lifting up or deducing the drill bit from stuck, you know, getting stuck. So uh, right now, uh, all, all these are theories and uh, we, uh, we don't have any uh, evidence. So either, you know, we do uh, more simulation, uh, modeling and simulation, and also uh, we need uh, some, some data to confirm so uh, if something is a stretching, uh, we have to have a way to measure, uh, well, uh, drill string position with respect to uh, uh, borehole wall. It could be, uh, I don't know, uh, sonic tools, imaging tool, some other ways to, uh, you know, high frequency decoding of uh, imaging tool to uh, confirm this. But I think those of, both of them are really good comments. Uh, next one, a LinkedIn user says, I'm here for the Miro stalls. I'm guessing it's supposed to be micro stalls. So oh, okay. micro stalls. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and then Jim Hughes, uh, says, does your company have any experience with electric drilling motors? SPE 38624. Uh, no, no. Yeah. So that, that could be a mitigation, one of the mitigation measures, right? So, uh, right now we have. I mean, as an industry, you know, dual telemetry system is available. So uh, I, have, I haven't seen any data uh, or papers any, anywhere. But, uh, you know, in theory, you know, if you have a problem with a uh, motor backdrive, you can switch to, uh, uh, you know, uh, like EM telemetry and uh, confirm the effect of uh, mud pulse telemetry. That, that's possible. But uh, so, so far, I haven't seen any data or any papers uh, written on this topic, but it's possible, yeah. Uh, then Jerry Hudson says, what commercial use can this data be used for? Uh, yeah, so uh, we, we can probably go more uh, about this, you know. So uh, I think we, we have to go to uh, field example two and three to understand uh, significance of uh, this problem or, you know, what's the uh, negative effect of this uh, this phenomena yeah okay uh then patrick asked a question that says was an frt which i don't know what that stands for run in this string mm -hmm. would that explain the 7.5 hertz so i'm guessing oh yeah yeah i think that's a really really good guess yes uh so uh okay uh, i apologize and i didn't really uh review my own paper but uh uh there may be a possibility that uh, you know friction reduction tool or axial oscillation tool can generate that kind of uh, frequency. So basically, that becomes the uh, pressure pulse, and that uh, modulates the uh, uh, pressure, and also modulates the uh, rotation speed uh, output from the motor. Uh, absolutely right. Yeah. All okay. Right. So. Uh, are we oh, going? Going? All right, we'll save we'll save some of the other questions for later. We've got some more. Yeah, uh, so, uh, yeah I think the thing is, yeah, some of them, some of these answers can be ans answered, you know, uh, in other examples. So uh, I will just go ahead and, uh, yeah, uh, go more, uh, deep, deeper dive into uh, this phenomena. So uh, the next one is, you know, next example is a high bit RPM reduction case. 
So Steve Jones and myself, you know, and the Sambian engineering technologies uh, routinely noticed uh, this uh, phenomena, you know, uh, ever since we had uh, uh, sensors, you know. So uh, uh, we gathered a lot of data and, uh, and you know, for publishing this paper, uh, I mean, we wrote this paper in 2020, uh, we accumulated a lot of uh, cases, you know, uh, what is the negative effect? What is the impact of this phenomena and what's the mitigation measures and all these things? So uh, the following shows the uh, following, uh, yeah, um, this plot shows the overview of a drilling dynamics for approximately 4.3 days. And this one shows the, uh, uh, you know, um, like a, one of the extreme cases of uh, uh, bit rotation speed reduction. Okay, so this was drilled in uh, Midland Basin in uh, 10,000 feet lateral. And we, uh, the top plot shows the uh, bit box uh, rotation speed from the gyro. And the second one is the top sub rotation speed. So again, uh, this one, we didn't see all the way, but in the beginning we saw uh, uh, zero RPMs sticking. And then uh, this is a zero RPM level right here. So we are seeing a lot of uh, negative RPMs in purple. OK, so uh, uh, 4.3 days is too too much. you know. So we're going to zoom into next, you know, uh, right here, uh, the first 17 hours. So this is the first 17 hours. So we have some uh, uh, rotating drilling and also a slide drilling period as well. Those are one, two, three, four, five, six uh, orange ovals. So again, we just pick uh, one one spot. You know, it could be any spot, but the, this one has a transition between, uh, you know, and the showing both, you know, rotating and the sliding. So, uh, so this one uh, right here is a 17 minutes uh, of, of period. And uh, there's a transition between rotating drilling and a slide drilling. So this one again, um, while drilling, uh, there are a lot of uh, drilling noise. So we can see, uh, we, we cannot really clearly see uh, what's what's really going on, uh, especially clear uh, mud pulse telemetry trace. You know, but you can you can sort of you know see it here when uh, bit rotation speed goes down. Uh, this is due to mud pulse telemetry. But once it's uh, sliding uh, here, it, it's pretty clear that uh, this looks like a mud pulse telemetry. And the pulse width is 0.5 second. And this one, uh, nominal rotation speed is 150 RPM. And when uh, mud pulser is activated, uh, bit rotation speed roughly drops uh, to 100 RPM, which is one third of a uh, rotation speed. So this is the uh, zoom in of uh, of that section. So we have some, okay, on both sides in the beginning and end. So we, we got uh, uh, nominal rotation speed, 163.6 RPM. This is actually a, taking a medium, uh, applying a medium filter to the data. And we, we got this uh, nominal RPM. And of course, you know, using uh, eye boarding, we can also get this, this data. And then when the uh, mud valve is act activated, uh, this one goes to, uh, yeah, 110 RPM. So a reduction of about one third. And in the middle, I didn't really uh, zoom in this one, but uh, also, you know, uh, this event also causes the bit to completely st uh, get stuck. And this one, uh, using the uh, uh, revolution per gallon R RPG, we can also uh, uh, back calculate uh, the flow rate. So nominal flow rate was uh, around 650, and then when uh, bit rotation speed is reduced, it becomes around, you know, 415 uh, gallons per minute. So uh, the, this, uh, yeah, this is uh, confirmed with, uh, with the data and the back calculation. 
All right. So, uh, so this is the effect, you know. So somebody asked a question, well, what's the uh, really uh, harm on this one or what's the negative effect? So uh, when you look at the um, rotation speed, uh, like average rotation speed, uh, if you do some calculation, uh, nominal rotation speed is one, 163 RPM, but the average is about, you know, 154 RPM. This is a, a bit rotation speed a reduction of 5.87%. So this is a different from, uh, uh, you know, 30, you know, one third, 33% reduction when the MUD pulse, pulses are activated because there's a, you know, um, duty cycle in, in the MUD pulse telemetry scheme. So uh, actual loss in the rotation speed is much lower. So this is what, what this is. And then they, let's take a look. So, uh, so basically, you know, this rotation speed loss of 5.87% uh, doesn't appear to be very significant, but uh, reduced uh, bit rotation, rotation speed may provoke more serious drilling dynamics, such as uh, bit sticking, slotting events, which init may initiate uh, further motor backdrive events or motor micro stalls. So this trend further uh, worsens with the longer pulse width and the use of more powerful positive pulse telemetries. So nowadays we are drilling uh, uh, 20,000 plus, you know, uh, daily. So uh, uh, that kind of wells, uh, we need to use you know, more powerful positive uh, pulses and this would be, become an issue. And this slide over here is for the next uh, just the explanation for the next next slide. But this is coming from uh, SP151248. This one shows the uh, uh, rotation uh, drilling of the motor versus sliding of the uh, motor. So you can see a clear difference in uh, uh, borehole diameter. While rotating, it's, it's drilling a slightly bigger hole, hole diameter. And while sliding, hole gets tighter and the uh, uh, motor fits into this kind of curvature. So uh, it started, you know, making, uh, uh, deviating. Uh, but this this part right here, sliding, uh, sliding period is tighter. So this is really important for the next slide. So there are a few events where a bit comes to complete stop and uh, while sliding, uh, you know, in, the, the one we saw in the previous slides. And also uh, this kind of event causes the uh, loss of the tool phase control. And when the motor drives the drill string backward. So this uh, has been studied before. Uh, it was called a reactive torque. And the Reja Wood et al. in 2015 uh, studied this kind of phenomena. And uh, this is very similar, uh, sort of reactive torque. But uh, this is more um, sort of radical because it, it really, you know, rotates the uh, drill string backward for a while, and that really creates a problem with the uh, uh, motor uh, bend section and the stator area, because this, uh, you know, bend housing, uh, bending uh, geometry fits into the borehole curvature. So when bits get stuck, you know, you cannot really rotate backward instantaneously because it's, it's pretty tight. So in order to rotate backward, it will cause a lot of uh, bending moment to the stators. So that one could cause the uh, problem with uh, motor fatigue, uh, you know, back offs and twist offs. And, and this, can, this can be found in Wilson's, uh, Wilson et al. in 2019. Uh, he reported the uh, backdrive dynamics and he also observed the uh, uh, damage on the mud motor uh, connection, you know, back offs and twist offs. All right. So, sorry. Okay. I got to be careful. Not, okay. Again, uh, coming back to this. Okay. So, okay. Some of the, uh, you know, we, uh, I mean, our Sambia engineers uh, believe that, uh, you know, this kind of, uh, uh, phenomena causes a lot of two-phase control anomalies and and also, you know, uh, failure of mud motors. 
that this is due to reduced rotation speed and, uh, um, and the resultant backward rotation uh, of the motor. And also here, I mentioned that the sudden two-phase control loss may further worsen the slide drilling performance in addition to the increased motor failure probability. And uh, this is a, in my paper. I said, you know, this topic is outside of the scope of this paper, but it needs to be investigated in the future. So, uh, yeah, in the paper, uh, sort of a consistency and the coherence is very important. So you cannot go to go every weed and going, uh, you know, um, uh, different topics. So I didn't really discuss, but this was really uh, uh, something that uh, somebody can uh, take a look in the future or myself or somebody. And again, you know, this is a paper from uh, uh, Matt Isbel et al. And he also showed this, you know, when the uh, weight on bit uh, gets high, this is a two-phase uh, curve on the left side. Uh, this changes, you know, slight, slight changes. So again, this is, uh, I think, 2022, March 2022, uh, one year later after my paper. And then, okay, uh, another paper. So this is, again, uh, Matt Isbell. Um, this was in uh, at the SPATCE in October 2022. Uh, he and his team published another paper. And yeah, both both papers. And I was uh, sitting in a room and looking at it, and I also read the paper right away. And I also confirmed, you know, my paper was referenced, so uh, they are uh, definitely aware of uh, my study, and they also looked at you know this kind of phenomena. So this uh, plot shows that uh, um, right here is the uh, rotation speed and they observed the negative rotation speed over here that coincided with the mud pulse. Uh, so the, this is a pressure trace. And they also increased the, uh, they, they also noticed the increase in the weight on bit. So uh, mud pulse uh, pulsar is activated, weight on bit increased, therefore bit got stuck. And, and then, uh, they noticed the uh, negative rotation at the drill string, okay, uh, so above the motor. So here uh, they show the uh, uh, drill string rotation. Uh, okay, so you can see many wraps uh, during this period. And uh, uh, purple is the tool face. It, it all shuff uh, shuffled around and then going, going through the rubbles and went to some other tool phase. So this is uh, most likely, you know, in the worst case, it's going to happen that uh, tool phase would be uh, shambled uh, in this manner. So uh, therefore, sliding efficiency would be reduced. All right, so uh, finally, yeah, I think uh, I, I went through a second example and I, I will go back to this, this kind of example again uh, from my, my case. Uh, but if at this point, if you guys, um, anybody from the audience having a question or, or David, uh, do you have any question or comments? Uh, we do have a couple of questions, uh, okay. questions and they still stem from, uh, earlier. So this one's from Jerry Hudson. Is this data useful in matching the bit to the motor? Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So, uh, so the, for the mitigation, yes, uh, absolutely. Right. So, uh, that would be, you know. Uh, kind of sort of, you know, we are skipping uh, to the end, but uh, we talk about mitigation um, at the bit perspective. You know, they don't know about back drive dynamics. Uh, for the bit perspective, this is like a full stall stick slip. And any mitigation method applied to drill bit can mitigate, back, uh, I mean, should be able to mitigate back drive dynamics. For example, less aggressive bit and a higher bit, uh, back rate angles or depth of cut features and all, all the other things. So uh, uh, absolutely right. Okay, next one uh, from the famous LinkedIn user. Was there any conclusion for dole grading correlated with the downhole data shown? And second question, did we look yeah. at connection practices when getting on and off bottom from this field study? Uh, this one, okay, uh, that one is actually, you know, okay, second question, uh, on bottom or bottom, uh, that connection practices. 
those uh, are really you know, outside scope of this this study. We are really focusing on uh, backdrop dynamics. But uh, you know, uh, Matt Isbell, Paul Partsek, all these guys published a lot of papers on that topic. So I really highly recommend reading that paper. And in terms of the first question, uh, what was the first question? One more time. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. uh, was there any conclusion for dole grading correlated with the right? Downfall? Absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Absolutely right. So uh, we uh, again, this is a, a little bit heading, you know, several slides, you know, uh, but uh, we had a, a follow up with study in 2022 and 2023. One of the follow up study is in 2022 last year, and this is all about uh, bit downgrading. Uh, because of uh, mud motor dream dynamics. This was co-authored by uh, myself, uh, Steve Jones, and Paul Partsek, because we use uh, Exxon mobile data. Uh, but yeah, definitely, we're going to cover that aspect later. And probably you would like to uh, read the paper, you know, more details about uh, bit downgrading based on, uh, 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 yeah, because of the negative effect of motor backdrop dynamics. Uh, another question, as a mit mitigation measure, could a uh, heavier BHA above the motor help? Yeah, that also, yeah, we will discuss this one later because we have a particular uh, field case, uh, example four, uh, we had an issue uh, that, uh, you know, uh, Shaket, yeah, he, you, you suggest this, you know, we had an issue with this. So this was definitely the uh, mitigation measure using, uh, you know, heavier, or a uh, bigger diameter uh, drill string. Yes. All right. So I think, uh, yeah, probably let's go to the next one. Now. Yeah. Is okay. that okay? Or is, yeah. is there one more question? No, no, no. We can go ahead. We can go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have a more question, yes. Uh, because some question started, you know, going to uh, uh, future slides. So uh, I think it's probably better to go ahead and, okay, next one. So, uh, in the example one or two, uh, we are looking at, you know, MWD mouth pulsar causing the issues, uh, particularly, you know, bit sticking and the motor driving the drill string backward. But this one is really uh, nothing to do with the MWD mouth pulsar. And uh, previous cases, a series of events, uh, actually one of events, a series of one of events. It could be for the entire run. We may observe this problem, but uh, it might not be. But in this particular case, we cover in example three is a limit cycle case. So uh, this is like a self-sustained uh, bit sticking and the motor backdrive dynamics. Uh, it's just a continuous. So uh, let's take a look. Okay. Uh, I have some issues with, okay. So uh, a conventional stable motor BHA with a 12 and quarter inch drill bit was run in West Texas. This was a, a 9.62 inch motor, a 7, 7 8th, and a 4.8 4 stage motor with a 0.1 revs per gallon. So uh, approximately 2,400 feet, this is the Yates formation. Uh, we observed this, this issue and uh, this plot is coming from uh, that depth uh, around the Yates formation. So surface rotation speed, you can see is, let's see here. Um, yeah, uh, about 50 RPM and 60 RPM. Okay, before uh, before sliding, it was 50. And after sliding, it's 60 over here, surface RPM. And the flow rate is about uh, 1,100 GPM. It's almost constant. And weight on bits uh, it, it is, okay, green. Yes, this is a uh, between 46 and 60 uh, kilopounds. All right. So uh, 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 we are observing a lot of uh, issues. Uh, again, bit sticking and a drill sting uh, going backward. So here we know, observe, you know, minus 50 RPM. Here, yeah, minus 50 RPM. So again, uh, just like a previous case, we're going to dive into uh, uh, detailed data. So this is one, one case of uh, uh, one part of uh, drilling dynamics data from 1000 Hertz in bit data. So uh, in bit data may come from a center line or a hockey puck type of sensor. 
And here I'm just uh, expanding a sliding interval uh, just to see uh, uh, more details on any uh, mud pulse, uh, pulse issues, causing any issues, right? So uh, here, uh, this is about 30 seconds, and we see very, very slight uh, issue with the mud pulse telemetry. But actually, this is not issue at all. And I think you know, some of the or majority of the uh, um, of the runs may be like this. Uh, I mean, mud pulse telemetry is working very good, but it doesn't cause any drilling issues. So this is one of those cases. Uh, uh, yeah. So David probably uh, had some uh, uh, pro provocative uh, LinkedIn messages and uh, um, posting, uh, but uh, this is not all the case. You know, mud pulse telemetry is working fine in this case and we don't point any fingers to this okay so this is the uh okay zoom in i okay uh right here okay so this wasn't right here we are zooming in the next slide okay so this right here is about 300 feet md uh about the yates formation in west texas so we noticed the 7.5 hertz oscillation uh, at the drill bit. Again, this 7.5 hertz is uh, maybe this is just a coincidence from uh, last, you know, last data. Somebody asked me about what is this 7.5 hertz. Uh, well, this is like, uh, you know, uh, shallow and uh, shorter depth. So uh, therefore, uh, oscillation frequencies are relatively high. So in this particular one, this is, a, a, I would say, uh, in between oscillation case, low frequency oscillation, and the full stall stick slip. Because if you see the data, it slightly touches to zero RPM, but never really got stuck for an extensive period of time. Uh, but it, it really touches. So uh, I, I was interested in those two points where uh, it actually bit goes to negative. So uh, here is the uh, zoom in of uh, 300 millisecond. So it looks like, you know, uh, uh, period is uh, uh, 133 millisecond, uh, 7.5 hertz, and uh, just a slightly going backward. It's it's very short period, nine milliseconds uh, going backward. So this was uh, already suggested by Warren and Oster uh, in 1998. So uh, it's not really a, a new discovery, but it's it could happen. And this is more recent case. Uh, okay, so this is from uh, this year, and the limit cycle motor backdrive case. And I, I just wanted to show you update, you know, from this year. Uh, so last slide we saw 7.5 hertz, uh, very high frequency, you know. So uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not really high frequency, but higher frequency uh, stick slip at the bit, and uh, causing a motor backdrive dynamics. This one is a period itself is uh, seven seconds. So every seven seconds, uh, a bit gets stuck and then shoots up, stuck again, and repeating by itself. And this one shows bottom one is a drill bit rotation speed, and the top one and a drill string rotation speed. And just by looking at the first data point, those are corresponding. You can see uh, almost like, uh, you know, um, copy and paste, but if you look at, you know, closely, it has a negative RPM, so it's not the copy and paste. Uh, but in any case, you know, if you look at the rotation speed, uh, drill string, uh, highest one uh, uh, from the top one, I, I mean, first uh, RPM is 230 RPM, and from the drill bit, 300 RPM, so difference is uh, 70 RPM. So you can tell uh, that the uh, 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 there's a motor uh, output that much, you know, 70 RPM. And also this one can be observed from uh, negative RPM as well. So when bit gets stuck, uh, stuck period is about, you know, four or five seconds. Uh, some of them like five seconds. Uh, drill string or the top sub of the motor, of the motor uh, rotates backward minus 70. So this is another way to tell, okay, yeah, uh, motor output is a uh, 70 RPM. But in this case, a bit got stuck. 
so uh, it's negative rotation and as you can see you know uh negative rotation speed going uh, going down uh i'm absolutely absolute value going to close getting closer to zero the reason is you know uh this is rotating a drill thing backward so uh, storing a lot of torsional energy uh, so as you rotate uh, backward uh, more and more uh, actually the torque demand increases in order to do this so therefore uh, motor output speed going down so uh, here right before uh, sticking is released uh, rotation speed was a negative 35 backward uh, 35 rpm but you have to think this is you know something you have to use the imagination but here uh all right um average rotation speed is 70 plus 35 divided by 2 so about 52 rpm and the stack period is five seconds so times five seconds which is like a one twelfth of minute so uh in this period okay when bit gets stuck motor is spending their energy just rotating reverse rotating a drill string in the storing energy and actually put 4.3 or 4.4 revolutions wraps on a drill string and a top drive also rotating uh somewhere like a 70 rpm and this is again you know divide uh sorry times uh, five seconds so this is uh putting uh, 5.8 wraps so all together, it's actually, you know, uh, putting uh, more than 10 wraps. So at some point, you know, this uh, release point, uh, there are a lot of uh, energy stored in a drill string. And at some point, you know, that energy can overcome uh, bit sticking. And then finally, bit is released. So uh, this is one explanation. Uh, of course, you know, there's a pointing effect, also a BHA ballooning effect. They may be uh, uh, also causing uh, a bit release so that uh, could be you know uh, researched in the future yeah so describe this uh, waveform i was going to say uh, sawtooth web waveform but i just saw uh, this image you know be, uh, on the internet this is a uh, sawfish uh, rostrum and it looks like exactly like this you know uh, a bit gets stuck and then released and bit gets stuck again so anyway so this is like a sawfish waveform I would say, oop, sorry, here. So, uh, so you know, we have to think a little bit about what's uh, what is going on and try to, uh, you know, like visually understand what's going on. So, uh, while drilling in a normal drilling, so torque required to to rotate a drill bit is actually smaller than uh, torque required required to back drive. So if this is the case, uh, it goes, ahead, uh, goes ahead and, uh, and uh, drilling. And once bit gets stuck, so torque required to, required to rotate a drill bit actually gets uh, uh, higher than uh, torque required to back drive. If this happens, uh, back drive occurs. And also this is also relation with uh, motor output torque with a given flow rate and the temperature and all the other things. So, uh, uh, you know, motor out output torque is lower than this, you know, it may get stuck. And this is called uh, micro stalling or stalling. So, uh, again, you know, this is uh, just a, a mental image. Uh, and, and then this is not the static condition. Uh, while drilling, this torque required to back drive, for example, changes all the time. You know, you are, uh, you are drilling deeper, longer, um, and you change the uh, bit width of MWD, yeah, this may be uh, uh, become smaller, uh, smaller to requ require the torque to back drive the drill string. Okay, so I think this is uh, one of the last slides. So this is a SPE, uh, the plot from SPE 151248, uh, Stockhausen et al. Uh, probably famous plot, you know, all the MWD guys, survey guys, uh, have seen this before. So uh, uh, there's a static survey points pointed here in a circle, and uh, continuous inclination measurement in a blue or black black dots. And uh, you know, 
the real tortuosity and the real problem of the of the well mm -hmm. be hidden by uh, static surveys. This is a really good example, and there's a name for this one: uh, Stockhausen effect. So uh, um, this is an analogy to uh, uh, downhole drilling uh, uh, dynamic sensors and instrumentation. When we have like a smaller compact and also uh, uh, continuously decoding high frequency sensors, you know, available, we are getting more data and understanding finest details between uh, uh, between the points. This is when uh, we started discovering. I think everybody, almost you know, several different people started understanding, observing the same thing, you know, around the same time, you know, within a spread of a few years. This is because of uh, uh, improvement in the technology and availability of the technology. So I, I think you know we we pushed the limit of uh, drilling speed, uh, but at the same time, uh, you know we start generating, creating more uh, downhole issues. But uh, you know uh, using uh, continuous uh, high frequency data uh, of uh during dynamics pressure data torque weight on bit we will start discovering those uh new issues as well so that's pretty much what i covered on example three so uh yeah example three i covered uh limit cycle case uh relatively higher frequency 7.5 hertz and also relatively lower frequency 0.143 hertz and this one uh, is again could cause the uh, drill string uh, twist off uh, back offs or motor back offs twist offs all, all sorts of issues in the extreme case so again uh david uh, do you have any questions or any there are, are there any questions uh we did have uh just a couple of comments that have come in i do want to mention this one here yumi said the direction of further examination of drilling dynamics dysfunction is consistent with sensor proven downhole BHA dynamics. Uh, solutions point to BHA design, selection of BHA component, uh, applied parameters, and operating interfaces. Uh, and then it goes on to plug two of the papers. So y'all be sure to oh, check okay. those out. Okay. Yemi, thanks for uh, the comments. Um, Robert put it here. Uh, if tool face angle responds to motor torque via drill string wind up in long term seconds, it makes sense that it would respond to micro pulses in short term milliseconds. And of course, DDs have known this for years. Oh, that's actually an excellent question. Yeah, that's uh, yeah another drawback or negative effects that uh, we never talked about. It's really good. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, not really sure if it's a question or not, or just, just something that Eric's putting out there, former guest on the show. Uh, what percent of sensors fail due to vibration that they are intended to measure? Seek problem, find problem. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, this is not really, uh, yeah, motor back drive dynamics uh, is not really, uh, it, it's not really toughest during condition. So uh, in this condition, I think we got a pretty high rate of success and the very low uh, failure rate uh, but you know uh, i think we can cover this conversation later because we have one slide showing uh, uh, continuous 200 g uh, uh, shocks on the sensors you know so that's that's you know um, probably best time to talk about it yeah all right well i i would say let's keep going we'll finish out here. okay all right so I, i'm sorry i probably i will hurry up and uh... no 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 i'm not I'm no, no hurry Judici. take your time Okay, yeah. All right, thank you very much. And uh, let's go to uh, example four. Again, this is a still part of a paper. So you can imagine, you know, we, we are not able to present this paper in uh, 17 minutes or 15 minutes. Okay, so uh, this is a high magnitude back drive case. And uh, this is also new discovery that uh, we made. Uh, so we haven't seen this, this kind of a, a report in the past. So the conventional stator motor BHA uh, with an 11 inch drill bit. This is the intermediate section uh, in West Texas, okay? And uh, uh, on the previous wells in the, okay, previous wells in the area, 
there have been uh, uh, several twist of incidents at the connection between six and uh, uh, six and a half inch drill cutters and heavyweight drill pipes. These incidents all occurred at the similar depth and in, the, in a similar formation. So in this case, we deploy the sensors uh, strat strategically and to understand what, what is really causing the issue and evaluating uh, drilling dynamics, uh, specifically understanding uh, uh, this twist off events. So here, uh, drilling dynamics decoders are uh, deployed at the bit. This is the bit rotation speed. And this is the rotation speed at the 8 inch sub. This is the top of the motor. And we also deployed a, a, a sub in a drill string. This is a 6 inch sub about uh, 1,100 feet away from the drill bit. And right away, you notice here, uh, this is uh, at the bit uh, 0 to 400 RPM. So uh, a lot of times, a uh, bit gets stuck. So basically, 0 RPM. And the rotation at the top sub, yeah, we are seeing minus 144 RPM and uh, swinging between minus 444 to 222 rpm this is at the eight inch uh, sub and here uh, actually uh, 1100 uh, feet away we had almost you know maximum uh, rpm spread so it's it's about plus minus 340 rpm so i think this is the first time we observed that the motor battery dy dynamics travels uh, through the drill string, and it could be amplified uh, further up, in this case, like 1,100 feet above the drill bit. And the explanation could be, okay, this could be a, uh, like a higher mode of a stick slip uh, or torsional oscillation involved. So there's a node and uh, uh, hills and valleys. So this one is actually close to the hills. Uh, like higher amplitude areas, and we catch the data. The second in interpretation would be, uh, okay, uh, this is also the conservation of uh, torsional energy. So uh, close to the bit, uh, we use a you know larger diameter uh, cutters and uh, drill string. So uh, the cutters. So uh, that that one um, has a one mass conservation uh well yeah, so energy of conservation with uh mass and mass and the uh, um and the velocity and this one uh because this is a smaller diameter uh velocity and the fluctuation gets higher so in e either case you know what we have observed is the problem with twist offs uh you know way above the drill bit and this is caused by uh, drilling uh, dynamics, uh, particularly motor back, dr back drive dynamics. So this is a discussion. So uh, uh, most notable drill string dynamics in fi uh, figure 22 is a stick slip severity up to plus minus 340 RPM. And uh, we measure the highest spread uh, torsional vibration uh, around 1100 feet above the drill bit. So uh, we confirmed that from this example, uh, stick slip and the torsional oscillation profiles are, are changing, varying you know, along the drill string. So also full uh, back drive events are observed uh, in this particular example and uh, reducing ROP. And I actually, I'm sorry, I didn't really mention. Yeah, as soon as you know, oh, this back drive dynamics occurs, and it depends on the spread between uh, uh, minimum and maximum RPM and how consistent it is, ROP gradually diminishing. And actually, the last part here, uh, you know, there's a little bit of relief. So therefore, ROP recovered a little bit. But in general, this is the, this is the case and the tendency that uh, the motor, I mean, we we deliver a lot of energy from the surface to the motor. And the motor is not uh, using that energy to uh, scrape the drill uh, formation. Bit got stuck. 
and doesn't do any cutting. But instead, you know, the motor energy is deflecting back and try to storing uh, torsional energy to the drill string, and in some cases destroying a drill string and the VHA components. So that's that's the case. Uh, all right, so uh, the last one is above. Uh, yes, OK. Uh, yeah, basically, this all affects to uh, drilling efficiency, efficiency. All right, I think this is the end of uh, example four. This is a quick one. Any questions? Uh, we didn't get any during that part. I would say just go ahead and jump into example Very good, five. very good, very good. OK, so we can go ahead and yeah, start finishing. So. Uh, the last one is the motor back drive mitigation tool. So we talk about all the problems, OK? Um, we have problem with the tool face uh, aligning in a sliding mode and also uh, uh, rotating a motor backward. That uh, causes a lot of uh, bending moment and fatigue to the motor. And also uh, uh, drill string back offs and twist offs. Uh, and we also have to talk about some mitigation measures. So this is one of the uh, uh, mitigation measures we uh, we tested and also reported in the same paper. All right, so let's dive into the data. So two conventional stereo motor BHAs were run in the near vertical eight and three quarter inch hole section in North Dakota. So this is like a direct offset well comparison evaluating the effectiveness of torsional dynamics uh, mitigation tool. So well A here uh, in the yellow was drilled with a conventional stereo motor, which uh, suffered a lot of uh, stick slip and uh, motor back drive dynamics. And so in order to reduce the motor back drive, back drive dynamics, uh, we, we deployed a torsional dynamics uh, mitigation tool. This is in uh, well B, uh, second, second well in black. So uh, we kept all the surface parameters as close as possible and uh, observed the difference. So let's go from uh, left side. So we have a well A. This is a conventional BHA uh, from a drill bit uh, data, ro rotation data from the left side. So we see a zero RPM and a spread between uh, maximum minimum is uh, really high. And the same as the uh, uh, you know, drill string, we have a very high uh, spread. Okay, spread. And uh, this will be uh, this one with the mitigation tool. So we saw uh, uh, less spread between those two, uh, uh, minimum and maximum at the drill bit. And, and also, all right, at the drill string, uh, almost like a similar profile, very, very similar. Sorry. So this one, um, so we can clearly uh, clearly tell that the uh, mitigation tool is working, and we have some uh, surface data over here. All right, sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, so one thing we notice is the uh, uh, in uh, a well a yellow curve, there's a lot of uh, torque fluctuation and the black curve, less fluctuation. That really deflects to uh, motor back drive dynamic severity. And the second well uh, in the black, once you know, um, uh, torsional dynamics is reduced, we got increased ROP. Yeah. So uh, in this case, in some, some places, ROP is doubled. So this is one of the uh, uh, mitigation measures for uh, bit stick slip and the motor back drive dynamics. All right, so I'm gonna just go through uh, uh, updates, you know, uh, from uh, two other cases uh, real quick. So uh, somebody asked, you know, what's the drill bit damage? So uh, we, uh, okay, there are really useful papers, you know, from uh, uh, industry joint papers. Uh, there are three of them. So uh, one of them is a bit in the BHA forensics using uh, uh, rig-based uh, photo, photo documentation practices. So we use this method uh, outlined in this paper to analyze the motor back drive dynamics. So I'm gonna just quickly go through this one. So this is the update and the follow-up from uh, last year, 2022. 
so the first run, you actually run uh, 16.5 hours and uh, pulled out because of uh, equipment failure. And uh, this one actually, you know, uh, pulled out on time. So we can see clearly see uh, uh, accelerated damage and wear from uh, motor back drive dynamics. And usually occurs in uh, shoulder cutters. And it start with a uh, smooth wear. And once smooth wear occurs, started, you know, uh, damaging uh, diamond as well. And uh, another run, this is actually much uh, longer run, 92.3 hours. So you can see clear progression. If you keep drilling like this, okay, uh, start with uh, smooth wear, that wear uh, area increases, that increases the friction, and the friction generates the heat. So that the uh, heat damage uh, pops up the diamond and finally lose those diamonds. And once it gets to this much, you know, uh, it very quickly, you know, progress to uh, ring out conditions. So this is the uh, pictorial uh, diagram to show it. And this is uh, actually coming from uh, one of those papers and uh, uh, Paul Patsek's uh, drill bit forensics uh, paper and the presentations. So typical damage from uh, torsional oscillations, uh, torsional dynamics, and uh, back drive dyna dynamics would be uh, those two uh, shoulder cutters or any any shoulder cutter damages. And it comes from a new bit and then a slight normal smooth wear that progresses to uh, uh, cutter damage, diamond damage. And then once it loses you know, those diamonds, it very quickly progress to ring outs. So uh, yeah, in the West Texas and somewhere else as well, we see a lot of ring outs. Ring outs. And once you get to this condition, uh, all the evidence is gone. So it's, it's very difficult to understand what happened. But if you have uh, intermediate uh, cases like this, you can see the progression of the problem and what causes the issues. And that, you know, a root cause can be determined by, uh, by looking at analyzing the uh, drilling dynamic sensors and the surface data as well. And this is another update from uh, uh, motor back drive dynamics. So all the previous examples, anything reported up to this point, you know, uh, 2023 are, are related to steerable motor applications. Uh, but this is uh, presented by uh, uh, Steve Jones, uh, CEO and the Sambian of uh, uh, sorry, CEO and the president of Sambian Technologies. So he presented this in uh, Stavanger uh, this March, and this one reported the uh, RSS, uh, uh, you know, RS motor assist RSS PHA with motor back drive dynamics. So this one uh, again, you know, you can see uh, typical damage around the shoulder areas. So this is a torsional issue, torsional dynamic dynamics causing, uh, you know, color damage, loss of the diamonds. And if you look at the data, uh, right, so we have uh, th three sensors, one at the bit, uh, bit box of uh, RSS. So this is right here. And then uh, uh, bit box of the motor right here over there. And then uh, uh, motor, mud motor top sub, this is the second one from the left. So uh, uh, both bit boxes, okay, RSS and uh, actually bit and the motor bit box shows very similar gyro RPM profile. And uh, uh, bit gets stuck uh, going to zero RPM and it shoots up to maximum RPM. And if you look at the above the motor, it goes to negative when a bit gets stuck. This is minus 130 RPM. And when this occurs, this, this is, you know, motor back drive dynamics going, uh, start, you know, uh, happening and uh, really progressively going really, really bad. So that you can see from a surface torque in green spread between uh, minimum maximum really gets really high and almost getting out of control. So ROP and this, uh, this track, you can see when, uh, motor back drive, drive by dynamics gets higher, it's going lower. And finally, you know, uh, up around this point, probably also uh, we lost the uh, diamonds and uh, a lot of color damages. 
of course, you know, ROP diminishes. One thing we note is uh, this uh, light brown curve is the M, uh, MWD gamma ray. So here, because of this torsional dynamics, uh, MWD2 failed, and we, we got a lot of erroneous uh, gamma data. So this is the consequence or consequences of uh, uh, motor backdrive dynamics. And on top of this, uh, this is again di different subject. You know, we can probably cover this subject in a different, you know, uh, presentations. But uh, uh, running RSS in the MAP motor below, uh, sorry, running uh, RSS and MWD below the MAP motor, we also observe the uh, around 100 hertz uh, HF, uh, HFTO, so high frequency torsion oscillation. This can be indirectly measured with uh, uh, tangential accelerations. And the tangential accelerations is highest at the drill bit. So here, uh, around the 200 hertz, uh, sorry, 200 Gs and 100 hertz. And the bit box of MAP motor, it's a little bit lower, around 100 Gs. And because HFTO is a much higher frequency than a stick slip or motor, uh, motor backdrive dynamics, um, and also uses the uh, higher order of uh, vibration, torsional vibration, it changes the uh, magnitude uh, pretty quickly, you know, uh, even uh, below the motor. So that's why we are seeing uh, so much difference uh, in uh, HFTO magnitudes, but you don't see much difference in uh, backdrive dynamics. So this could be a different subject. Uh, and again, this mitigation measures, there are two of them. Um, I mean, you can read this paper, 212467. We also uh, run the uh, stick slip, slip mitigation tool below the motor. And that also mitigated both uh, motor back to drive dynamics and HFDO at the same time. Another one is this is actually a creative solution. Uh, so we remove the uh, uh, motor from um, from the BHA. That also uh, removed the uh, motor backdrive dynamics and the HFDO. And actually, a uh, bit came out green after drilling. So uh, uh, in this case, we, we saw two solutions. And actually, I'm going to skip this one. Uh, we also suggested, you know, a proposed in the, in the paper uh, that we use the uh, intelligent uh, or instrumented wired motor in order to detect uh, backdrive dynamics in real time. Uh, but this is just uh, uh, our original proposal, and uh, we are uh, running this, uh, this tool uh, in the field. So again, uh, a lot of people ask about you know mitigation measures. So uh, this is basically you know at the bit perspective, this is a stick slip uh, or torsional oscillation. So any mitigation method applies to stick slip works. So for example, you know uh, depth of cut feature modification or less aggressive drill bit and matching you know bit and motor. Of course, somebody suggested from LinkedIn this one works. And also, you know, uh, already somebody commented this, you know, we, if, we, if, if people use electromagnetic EM telemetry, acoustic telemetry or wire, wire telemetry, uh, we may be able to, able to avoid issues with uh, mud pulse telemetry induced uh, stick slip and uh, motor backdrive dynamics. So again, this is a case by case, you know, there are a lot of other cases that uh, uh, a mud pulse telemetry doesn't affect really the bit rotation speed. And then, uh, so uh, uh, this is example four. So backdrive dynamics magnitude and diverse rotation peak levels, all of them are depending on where you measure uh, the amplitude. So uh, it varies you know, along the drill string. And sometimes, you know, this backdrive dynamics causes the problem uh, far away from a drill bit. And lastly, what we observed from uh, uh, example five, so downhole mitigation tool can reduce stick slip and eliminate motor back to drive dynamics. So this was proved by uh, both, you know, um, uh, the conventional steerable motor case and the motor assist RSS case.
So that pretty much, you know, uh, summarize my uh, my uh, presentation and all the references I use is here. A uh, lot of people may be uh, uh, interested in reading those papers. And also at this point, I can take uh, any questions from the uh, audience, but uh, uh, only technical press, uh, questions. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, love the pictures up there. Uh, Juan says, field example is very interesting since I have witnessed some cases where the limit of the top drive is set to 80% of the makeup torque uh, of the pipe <clears throat> and the connections came over torqued as sometimes we have uh, back off as mentioned. Yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely right. So, uh, yeah, this one, um, I mean, we, uh, we measure this with the sensors and you have to have a good imagination what, what's going to happen. So uh, as I mentioned, you know, uh, motor drive, drives the drill string backward and the uh, backward rotation uh, severity is not highest at the motor top, but could be much higher along the drill string. So, uh, that can explain why back off and twist off occurs. Yes, good, good comment. Yeah, Robert uh, says Dupree's analysis at Utah Forge shows both drilling inefficiency (ROP) and bit cutter damage occur when natural drill string resonance (RPM) range are excited. Absolutely right. So uh, this paper uh, is SPE two zero four zero three two PA, and uh, I actually, you know, uh, put some uh, uh, theoretical or natural frequencies of uh, drill string, okay? But this one, uh, I have never seen any um, modeling and simulation of a modern back drive dynamics. So uh, uh, I really cannot really tell uh, if that, you know, theoretical uh, natural frequency of drill string matches to uh, uh, motor backdrive dynamics because in this case, you know, motor backdrive dynamics case, we have uh, two uh, excitation sources from the to top drive and the mud motor, and they can go both uh, opposite directions and they may to meet together somewhere in the drill string and the back, back down. And I think, you know, that's some area that, uh, you know, researchers can spend some time do a modeling and simulation of entire drill string to understand more about this phenomena. Yeah, good, great question. All right. Uh, <clears throat> this one's from King. Uh, it says, any particular reason for the MSC with and without the mitigation tool approximately the same was expecting there to be a difference since there is a 2x ROP improvement? Uh, actually, that's an excellent question. OK, so uh, it depends on the case, OK? Uh, we. Okay, uh, we deliver the energy from uh, from the top, okay, from the surface, okay, and that could be a, a motor flow converted to a, a rotation speed at the motor, right? And that energy is not used for drilling, so uh, that means you know you have a lot of a torque uh, output from motor, but that that torque is used for winding you know reverse uh, rotating a drill string and the winding and storing energy into the drill string so uh uh yeah if you look at the mac equation all the rpm torque everything is on uh, um denominator uh, yeah uh, nominate uh, yeah uh, upstairs right uh, and then uh rop is in on the uh, uh denominator so uh the uh, lower, lower, uh lower portion so ROP goes down, but we are supplying a lot of energy from the top. So MSE goes up in theory. Uh, so that's the case. But in some case, okay, this is the case, uh, also another case, okay. We, without any uh, stick slip mitigation tool, uh, because uh, surface torque fluctuation is so high that uh, you know, driller is really afraid you know, putting more. And they know that uh, you know, if they put more energy, it will just reflect back and destroying uh, drill string so they don't they don't do it because of this they have a limit and the surface you know um weight on bit or to uh, or, or torque whatever the you know parameters we use in the msc equation and because of this you know we may have less input from the surface 
B therefore, MSC is lower. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, th therefore, MSC stays the same. But, you know, with a mitigation tool, you can, uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, torque fluctuation from the surface. So they can put more, um, uh, more surface, you know, uh, weight on bed and other parameters. So uh, it may be the case, you know, uh, MSC stays the same, but because of this is more like operational issue, uh, we, we couldn't do some kind of a comparative analysis. When you can drill faster with a less torque fluctua fluctuation, they, they drill faster. Yeah. But in theory, you know, if you, if you use the same surface parameters, uh, we, we should see a difference in MSE. And that's, that MSE is not, not from a, a bit, uh, sorry, formation competency or hardness. It's, it's just coming from uh, energy lost downhole. All right. Well, we had one more question that was very okay. similar to that one. You, you pretty much covered it. So, Junichi, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really, really, really do appreciate it. Uh, thanks for everybody tuning in and watching today. A little bit longer episode than normal, but we covered a lot of really good technical stuff. Glad that you finally got the chance to be able to cover all five examples right in a row right. uh, here. Like I said, this is something I've been fascinated with, um, you know, you know, just seeing how MWD tools uh, affect everything else that's going on down hole. And I think it'd be a great study to be able to do, uh, you know, a dual telemetry tool running mm. pulse and EM at the same time, and then mm. turning one on and off and being able to put the documentation together that shows yeah. what's taking place down hole. So uh, without further ado, uh, let me go ahead and put this up here on the screen for all those guys, everybody that, uh, Put something in there so if you haven't already thanks carrie for tuning in putting in hashtag ai driller this is your chance to be able to win cool little drill bit uh along with some other ai driller swag so special thanks to ai driller for sponsoring the show uh and being able to allow us to be able to continue to present um great free technical information At no point in time is this a cash grab grab or anything like that uh uh so then daryl check says uh awesome job junichi uh great discussion thanks david and junichi uh so thanks everybody for tuning in all right let's do this drawing real quick get everybody on to their friday and a wonderful wonderful thanksgiving week so our winner for today is hopefully it's not me don't pick me the oh it almost said tracy <laughs> all right uh i, I want to say this shikant uh, it was very active in today's show. Um, he actually had one of the last questions, but I think we covered that with King's question, uh, question that he had. So I uh, get in touch with me or with Tracy, and we will get you a awesome 3D printed Gibson Report drill bit sent your way, along with some other AI driller swag. Um, that's it for me. We don't have a show next week because it's Thanksgiving week. Um, but the week following, we're going to have Bill Murray coming on and talking about um, uh, mud motors, uh, mm -hmm. as well as we're going to have some, we've got some other things kind of lined up and potentially I'm going to put it out there just to be able to put some pressure on myself doing another mini series like we did at the beginning of this year. We did the torque and drag mini series, probably do something over either wellbore stability or hydraulics. <clears throat> I know that both of those items have been requested and even potentially uh, manage pressure drilling. I don't know. Maybe I'll push myself to do three mini series next year or two, at least two. Um, oh my gosh! Somebody even said thanks, Gigi. Oh, from, from thank you very much. <clears throat> Had to put that one out there. All right. Uh, maybe we'll even get Isabel to be able to come on the show. If you guys didn't notice earlier, she was a co-author on all three of those papers that we had up on the screen at one time. Yeah, I, I, I will highly recommend her. She's an expert in this area, and she did a presentation at SPE. So uh, I'm sure she's uh, she can handle so easily. Yeah, so hopefully, if you guys would like to be able to hear from uh, Isabel and have her on the show, please comment now and say, yay, Isabel, or something like that. Just put it in the comment section. Uh, I know she's going to absolutely love me saying all of this, and I'll probably get 100 <laughs> texts afterwards. Uh, but she would be, That's I so believe, it. a phenomenal person to be able to have on the show. Anything Julian Mechanics related, I absolutely uh, love. And if we can start to disseminate more and more of that information to the people out there, um, love being able to do it. All right. 
that's it from me, guys. Thank you guys all so much for being here. Thank you, Junichi. Thanks for all everybody watching. Everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I am very thankful for everybody that out there that watches the show and participates, yeah. in, especially to our sponsor, AI Driller. That's it from me. Uh, as always, know your industry.